Okay, hello everyone. Um, this is Niaz Moshed, a software engineer at AppScode. So our today's webinar is about backup and restore Redis database using Kubestash. So Kubestash is a complete uh, Kubernetes native digester recovery solution for backup and restore your volumes and databases in Kubernetes on any public and private clouds. So let's see the let's see the contents uh, we will discuss today. Uh, first, we will discuss um, about the Kubestash backup workflow, and then uh, we'll show a live demo of Redis backup, and then we'll shortly discuss about the Kubestash restore workflow, and then we'll show a live demo of restore as well. Uh, finally, we'll discuss, uh, we'll uh, have a short uh, question and answer session. So first of all, uh, you have to install kubedb for uh, for this purpose. Uh, you can install it by using the help command shown here. Uh, you can check out our website kubedb.com for more details and documentation on that. So for installation of kubestash, uh, you can follow these help commands. Again, you can check more details on kubestash.com. So Let's see a simplified overview of Kubestash backup workflow. So, uh, to take backup using Kubestash, um, first your user have to create a backup storage object which will contain the necessary um, information about the backend where the backed up data will be stored. And then uh, user have to create a backup configuration object which will contain uh, about um, contain the information about the target database uh, for taking backup and also information about the uh, backup storage and repositories and the sessions. So it can contain uh, multiple sessions um, uh, which uh, will be uh, which will be used. Uh, uh, by the Kubestash operator to create a cron job. So we will see um, details uh, of this backup configuration object um, later. So <coughs> Kubestash operator will watch for um, the backup storage object and when um, it finds one, it will initialize the backup storage object uh, by uploading the metadata uh, into the backup storage and then into the backend and uh, also watch watches for the backup configuration object and when it finds uh, the backup configuration it will uh, create cron job um, uh, it will <coughs> create a cron job for each session specified uh, in the backup configuration session contains the schedule and so um, and the cron job will create a backup session according to the schedule provided so Kubestash uh, operator will watch for the backup session and uh, uh, create uh, snapshots and uh, Kubestash operator will resolve the add-on uh, add-on provided in the backup configuration object and also and, and create a backup job that will execute a, uh, execute a specific backup logic uh, for taking uh, backup from the target database and dump that backed up data into the backend. So um, this is a this is a simplified overview of Kubestash uh, backup workflow. So uh, let's uh, jump into the live uh, jump into the live demo for backup. So first uh, we we see uh, the EMLs shortly that will be used uh, for this now uh, demo. So first we have to create this uh, backup configuration, backup storage object. Um, so which uh, contains the storage uh, provider information. You can uh, you can uh, use uh, S3, GCS, Azure, or any any uh, and some other uh, storage provider as well. So you have to provide uh, the details of this um, uh, of the storage provider. Um, uh, so like bucket, you have to provide the bucket um, and information, uh, endpoint region, and you can provide a prefix um, for that bracket. And you have to provide uh, the access credential secret, uh, which will be used to access the bucket. And uh, you, in uses policy, you can, uh, here I, I have given all, that means this backup storage object can be 
uh, used uh, in all namespaces. And uh, here I have said the default is true so that uh, in demo namespace, if uh, user create a backup configuration but uh, doesn't provide uh, the backup storage information, then this backup storage will be used uh, as default. And deletion policy is wipeout means that uh, we want uh, the backup data uh, be deleted um, when um, backup storage is deleted. So uh, if you don't want that, then you, you have to, pro you can provide deletion policy as delete, okay? So uh, let's see the retention policy uh, object. Uh, so this is, uh, this is also a CRD. It can be reused uh, in different backup configuration. Um, for, so here, uh, the max retention period, um, uh, I have given it two months so that uh, the snapshot older than two months will be automatically deleted. And I, I want to keep the last um, last 10 successful snapshot information. And here also, usage policy is uh, all namespace, allowed namespace. Okay, so I can use this retention policy in all namespace. And uh, let's see the backup configuration object. So this uh, in backup configuration object, you have to provide the target information um, um, that you want to take the backup and the backend information. Uh, so you can uh, you can provide uh, multiple backends here. So the backend name and uh, you have to provide the storage reference. Uh, so uh, I have provided the backup stories that uh, I have created earlier. Uh, so yeah, and the retention policy for this um, backend and that's in the session, uh, we have to provide the schedules and necessary information that is um, used uh, for creating the cron job. So we can, uh, okay. And the repository section, uh, we can provide a directory uh, where the backup data will be uh, stored, repository data, and uh, we we ca we can pro we have to provide an encryption secret that will be used to encrypt the data uh, stored in the backend. And in add-on section, we have to provide the add-on that uh, that will contain the specific um, backup specific logic for taking the backup. So task. Uh, in the task section, we have to mention the task that uh, that contains the specific um, that is a specific backup logic. So this is uh, all about the backup configuration object. So uh, now let's uh, dive into the demo part. So I am using a client kind cluster for this demonstration. So I have created a bucket uh, in Linode and created a um, backend secret to access that bucket. So let's see the bucket that I have created. So this is the bucket uh, in Linode I have created. So this bucket is empty. Let's, um, so I will store my data in this bucket. So let's um, create um, the Redis um, that I want to take backup, Redis instance. Uh, so the, this is a kubedb managed uh, Redis instance. So version is 7.2.3. So let's create this, uh, create this Redis instance. So here I am watching the necessary uh, resources. Uh, so Redis instance is uh, creating provisioning. So provisioning by the kubedb operator. So we can see that pod is now. Uh, what is running. So let's uh, insert some data in, in, in this Redis instance. Uh, so so we can insert um, some uh, data for uh, quickly insert some uh, data for testing purpose using our kubedb CLI tool. So let's insert, quickly insert 100 keys uh, into this Redis instance using kubedb CLI. So we, we can see that uh, 100 keys are inserted into this Redis. Let, let's see that keys are present or not. So we can see that, yeah, uh, kubedb CLI inserted some dummy 
100 keys. So uh, you can also verify using uh, kubedb CLI tool that. So we can see that uh, this Redis standalone instance contains 100 keys. Okay. So let's apply and the back backup storage object now. You can see that the backup storage object is in ready state. So let's see in Linode. Now we can see that the prefix we have provided in the backup storage. So this in the, the backup storage is initialized successfully. So let's um, create uh, the retention policy. Okay, so I have created this earlier. And uh, let's create the encryption secret that will be used uh, in the backup configuration object. Okay, so just secret is created. And uh, now let's apply the backup configuration. Okay, backup configuration is uh, created and the phase is not ready so let's uh, wait to wait for it become ready okay so it is uh, in ready state and a clone job is created it will be triggered every five minutes so uh, we can uh, instantly trigger a backup uh, using give stash cli tool so let's do that You can see that uh, instant backup session is created. Um, so backup session is running and also a backup job is created. So let's wait uh, for this backup session is to become successful. So a snapshot is also created. So Okay, so the backup session is successful and snapshot is also subs, uh, in successful phase. So let's see uh, in Linode. You can see that the, the directory and the snapshot, uh, so a snapshot is created. So our data is backed up successfully. Uh, Let's uh, now pause this backup configuration so that uh, we don't backup anymore. Okay, so backup configuration is paused. Yeah, so paused is true. So this backup configuration is now paused, so it will not uh, trigger any backup anymore. So, okay. So now let's see the restore, give us restore workflow. So if any digester uh, scenario occurs, so we have to restore our backup data. So let's see the, let's see give us just restore workflow. So to restore uh, Redis instance uh, using give stash, uh, user have to create a restore session object first, uh, which, will, which um, will contain information about the target database, uh, where the data will be restored, and the data source information um, where you have, you have to provide the snapshot and repository information. So uh, this information uh, con will be contained in the restore session object and uh, so, and when taking the restoration, um, if any restore session object is created, then uh, kubestash operator will pause any backup configuration that is configured for the for this target database. So, uh, then kubestash operator uh, resolve the add-on um, uh, that is mentioned in the restoration object and uh, 
create the restore job which will execute the rest, uh, redis specific restore processes and then it will download um, the restore uh, job will downloads the data from the back end and restore that into the target database so let's uh, this is a simplified restore workflow uh, for kiosk so let's see live demo of restore so to take uh, restore uh, uh, first uh, see the crd restoration crd so this is the uh, this is restoration crd uh, and uh, here we have to mention the target information where we want to restore the data and in data source section we have to provide the snapshot uh, snapshot uh, which snapshot we want to restore uh, if we put the latest then the latest snapshot will be restored and uh, repository information and also the encryption secret the same in encryption secret that is provided in the backup configuration to decrypt the encrypted data and also in add-on section we have to provide the add-on name and uh, the task that contains the specific restore logic uh, to restore this um, restore redis database okay so let's see the demo for restore session Rest okay so first uh, we have to we have to create some digester scenario scenario um, so uh, in first case, let's say that uh, we have um, somehow deleted all our data. So let's delete all the keys present in this Redis instance. So we can see that uh, no keys are present in our Redis instance. So now we, we want to restore uh, this Redis database in um, previous state. So we have to create a, the restore session object. Um, so let's create that. You can see that the restore session uh, is created and it is in running and the restore job is also uh, created. So uh, it is uh, succeeded and the restore job is completed. So let's see that uh, we can, we have restored the data successfully or not. Okay, so we have successfully restored um, the keys that were present previously. So this is uh, one digester scenario. So I want to show um, another digester scenario. Let's say we have, um, we, we somehow this Redis instance is completely deleted. So let's delete uh, this Redis instance. Okay, so Redis is deleted and I want to um, restore the backed up in, uh, data into another Redis instance. So uh, we, I will create another Redis um, named Redis Restore and we'll restore the data in this Redis instance. So let's create the Redis Restore. Okay, so we have created uh, our Redis, uh, second Redis instance, which is in provisioning. Let's wait it to become ready. Okay, so the Redis store is in ready state. So let's see any uh, keys are present here. So there is no uh, keys uh, rather than the QDB health checker key. So let's uh, flash that as well. Okay, so you can see that there is. Okay, so this is uh, a health checker keys. It is inserted. Okay, so uh, we don't have any keys present, uh, but we want to restore that um, 100 keys uh, that were present previously in uh, uh, in our previous Redis instance. So for um, that reason, we have to create another restore session. And so 
in that restore session um, which is named Rest redis restore session 2 we have to provide the target redis instance as redis restore and uh, in the data cell source we have to provide the same repository and the latest snapshot so let's create um, the rest uh, second redis restoration restore session 2 okay so restore session 2 is created and it is in running phase so let's wait uh, for it to become successful yeah so it is in successful so restore job is also completed so let's see that we have we have all our keys present yeah so we have successfully restored um, and the inserted keys um our backed up keys data okay so this is uh this is how uh you can back up and restore redis instance um give db managed redis instance um using kubestash um the process is same for uh, redis cluster as well uh if you want to uh, back up and restore redis cluster you have to just um uh, provide the Redis cluster instance name, namespace uh, in, in instead of the Redis standalone. So for taking Redis cluster backup restore, uh, the process is same. Okay, so we have uh, finished our demo. Let's, okay. So if you have any questions regarding uh, this webinar, you can ask now okay so i think uh, you, um, you don't have any question so we can finish uh, thanks for joining this webinar